G'day. In this video, we're going to start to make the sound stimuli that we're going to use for our psychophysics experiment. Remember, we're going to use Psychopy and Python to um, conduct and run our psychophysics experiment. And so the first thing that we need to think about is, well, what stimulus are we going to use? We're using sound, it's auditory stimulus. And how long do we play it for? Do we have to play it for five seconds, one second, 10 milliseconds? What sort of sound do we use? Do we use a pure tone or do we use a noise burst or a tone chirp? Hey, these are all different things that you can design your own experiments to find out. What we're going to do in this video and in these sets of experiments is base our stimuli very loosely on previous research. And one experiment that I was a part of as a subject was this paper by Michael, Don and Jeff that was published about 11 years ago, 2008. So Michael was a PhD student when I was a PhD student in the same lab. He was also doing his audiology masters as well. But anyway, he did psychophysics experiments um, with Don and Jeff. And I think we can use this as a fairly good starting point. Okay, published in Hearing Research. Don and Jeff are a couple of professors, uh, physiology and psychology professors who also helped with the experiments. So we need some numbers here. Uh, Mike did a two interval force choice procedure. So I'm gonna just highlight a lot of stuff and we're gonna go through it in the next couple of videos. So don't worry if you don't understand exactly what's going on here. Um, he then played a uh, 250 millisecond probe tone. So, ah, there we go. We need to make a tone for 250 milliseconds. And then, well, what frequency? He used a 1K signal and he did a 84.1%. So that's a four down, one up procedure. Okay, for 105 times. Okay, so I think we've got the bare minimum information. We're going to go through all this in the next couple of videos. So don't worry if you don't follow what we're doing. How did he play the stimuli to the... I remember he played it over headphones. So he used a pair of Sennheiser HD280 Pro headphones. Okay, what am I using? Oh, I'm using the same one. So what a wonderful coincidence. So he used a pair of, um, pair of these Sennheisers. 250 milliseconds, one kilohertz. This is all that we need to make our sound stimuli. So I'm using Audacity. You can use MATLAB if you are comfortable creating waveforms in MATLAB. Mike created his using LabVIEW. Okay, there's many ways to do it. You do what you're comfortable with. We're tracing a 250 millisecond tone at one kilohertz. I've just opened up Audacity. We're going to go to generate. We're gonna generate a tone. Can you see that? You can. Now, we're gonna generate a sine wave at one kilohertz, so this is all correct. Now, we'll just make it a one amplitude. We're going to use our Python to change the amplitude later on. And we're going to have a duration now of uh, zero hours, zero minutes, zero, zero seconds, 250 milliseconds. Okay, this is what we want. So there's the waveform there, and it goes from zero to 250 milliseconds. I hit play, you should hear it. Oh, there we go, I'll do it again, hit soft. All right, do it again. Great, so it seems to have worked, but we've got that problem. Remember, at the start and at the end of our stimulus, we go from 100% of the sound output to none, nothing, basically instantaneously. And we, we realized that that could set up some distortions and some harmonics because we've got this abrupt transition from no sound to a sound. In fact, if you have a look at the waveforms that Mike put on his, on his figure, you can see here, here is the re representation of his sound. You can actually see he's got this sort of very brief fade in. It's not a square box, but rather it's a box with this sort of um, fade in and fade out, okay? So we need to do a similar thing. Now, again, we could use something like a Blackman window or a Blackman-Harris window or something like that, and that's going to shape the wave, the, sorry, the, the edges of our stimulus. For our stuff, we're just gonna make it super simple put a linear rise fall time in. And we'll do it over the first 10 milliseconds or so. So what do we do? Let's just zoom in on this bit so we can see the first 10 milliseconds. We then left mouse click and hold down for that 10 milliseconds. So I've gone a little bit too long there. So I'll bring it back to 10. And what do we wanna do? We want to fade in. So effect, fade in, 
There we go, it's faded in. Now I'm just gonna scroll right to the end and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna have a symmetrical rise fall time. So we start at 240, go to the end, and then we make it clip that last 10 milliseconds and then we'll go to effect, fade out, and there we go, we've got it there. So now if we play it, it should sound almost the same, but if you do it in your headphones, um, you should hear a, a sort of a smooth onset and a sort of a smooth offset, a smooth attack. Right, let's export this as a WAV file. And I am going to save this as 1K 250ms, so 1 kilohertz, 250 milliseconds, 10RF. That RF stands for rise fall time. So I know when I look at this stimulus, this wave file, it's a one kilohertz tone, 250 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds rise full, and it's a wave file. So save that. I do want to replace that because I'd made it in a previous uh, uh, video that I didn't use. Okay, there's two more bits of information that you need to be aware of. We have made this stimulus at 48,000 hertz. That's the sample rate. So you need to write that down, 48K. It's also a mono, signal which means it's not stereo but rather it's one channel it's in mono great that's all we need to do for this video we've got our sound stimulus there it is we're going to now we don't need audacity anymore we now need to go to our atom and our command prompt to start to make our experimental program to control the loops and to control this and to control that okay so Stop this video here. We've got our sound stimulus. In the next video, we'll start tackling the Python side of things. All right, I'll see you then.